Richie, when you look back at the World Cup qualifiers, you know, it's kind of funny because I think people forget how tough it was that you guys were playing home games in the United States. You weren't even on home soil when here you were kind of starting things out. When you look at those earlier games, just what was going through the team's mind as you began this journey to qualify for a World Cup for the first time in 36 years? Yeah, I think those memories feel so long ago, actually. Um, yeah, obviously tough. We'd like to play in front of our fans and then obviously friends and family and stuff like that. And we didn't get the chance to, I think we played maybe almost four games or more than that, actually more than four games with no fans in the stadium at all. So it was obviously a grind. It's tough when other nations were able to play in front of their home fans and stuff like that. So yes, it was, uh, I think tough, but I think we didn't even realize how tough it was because we were so dedicated to reaching our goal that we've obviously ultimately reached. So when did it first hit you that you were making an impact in Canada? Because again, you're not at home. Sometimes there's barely, you know, nobody in the stands. And then you do have that first home game, right? And it's and it's pretty packed. But when did you start to realize you were having an impact in Canada? Yeah, I think right before the World Cup qualifiers started. So after the games against Haiti, I think um, we're like, oh, wow, like this is, it's happening, you know? And then I think Gold Cup was a nice touch right after that because we got to play against top teams. And I think the game against Mexico really got a lot of people excited because we went there with, you know, a few key guys missing um, on the team, a good, actually a good amount of key guys missing on the team and did well against like a good Mexico team. So I think from that point on, I think a lot of us that did go to Gold Cup realized we're like, okay, we can, we can do this. We just showed that we could play against a top team and do well. So it was, I think between the Haiti game and then that Mexico game at Gold Cup was, uh, in my opinion, uh, I like, turning moment for um, me looking into our national team. This is also a team, you know, if you go back to 2019 Nations League defeating the United States for the first time in decades as well, and everyone said, well, maybe that was lightning in a bottle and a little bit of a fluke. So, you know, you get a result against them when you're playing on their turf, then you beat them when you play them in Hamilton. You get a result against Mexico and Mexico. You beat them on home soil as well. How pivotal were those games against the Americans and the Mexicans who are considered the giants of CONCACAF? Yeah, I think it was a step in the right direction for us. I think um, when you speak about becoming a football country, those are the games you need to win. You need to win those games. Like you said, I think when we beat the U.S. in 2019, a lot of people were like, yeah, it might be fluke. And then we did play them again and we lost 4 nothing. So um, that was probably a good um, slap on the wrist for all of us that game that we played against them in Orlando and yeah I think from that point forward you see that we need to you need to give everything when you play against teams like that and then also be us being fearful I think um, when we played uh, Mexico in, in ha uh, Edmonton and then U.S. in Hamilton it showed that um, we are fearless and yeah that we were serious and want to be the best in CONCACAF and that's something we actually said internally within our group before qualifiers started is that we want to finish first in qualifiers. So um, that's how much belief I think we had as a group, uh, coaching staff and all of that to go into this game. Where did that belief come from? You know, again, I, I, you keep hearing the number 36 years, last time you qualified for a World Cup. But yet I'm hearing from a lot of the guys when you were to write down goals, you said not only qualify, but to finish first. Where did that oomph come from? I think um, first and foremost, I think John instilled that into the group where I wasn't part of the first camps, but you know, he was telling guys we're going to go to a World Cup, we're going to go to the 2022 World Cup, all of that. So um, I think he started and guys just started like, okay, this, this is it, you know, we're going we're gonna to go for it. You know, maybe a crazy thought in 2018 when he took over became um, a reality for us. But I think um, the group we have, a lot of very eager, hungry players. If you look amongst the group, I think there's a lot of guys that have something to prove uh, within the team. You know, guys that have either been let go of teams, guys that have aren't weren't playing as much at times with their club and stuff like that. So I think it was, or guys that, if I'm being uh, completely honest, myself included, that people probably had no idea who you were. So you know, you go into these games and it's. Perfect. You're playing against the, um, you know, the giants of Concacaf guys that play on some of the biggest clubs in the world, and it's a showcase for yourself. So I think that's what the um, 
belief is for us we want to show that not only can we beat teams like that but also compete with their best players and show that we deserve to have the exact same pressure and limelight that those guys have there was never any doubt that this was going to be a strong offensive team just by looking at those names on paper so do you pride yourself as well in knowing that yourself you just mentioned it right here you are with the national team you've answered a lot of those questions people had around the defense so not only does canada have that offense they always knew they had but now you have this strong back line too how much pride do you take in that yeah no it's big time i think uh like you said that's something the national team's been screaming for for many years and now it has a very stable more than stable back line with several different guys that are able to rotate in and out of the lineup and it's as fluid as it is if you keep it for whoever you want to list uh, in the back line. So I think it's super important, I think, for a national team. Obviously, scoring goals is very important, but keeping clean sheets and as many as we did in qualifiers is impressive for a team, you know, um, with some pretty new defenders and young faces back there. I think we did a pretty good job. And yeah, I think it just comes down to that belief as well and knowing that we need to stick together and we kind of obviously it's not only the the back line the guys in the front help us as well we i think defend very well collectively but um yeah i think it's it's big time we needed that as a national team how important was it for you uh, to rejoin toronto fc and get that playing time yeah big time i i wanted to make sure that i was in rhythm getting games you know also blessed to be able to play with daniel also and mark anthony here who are all in the national team so it's not many guys get to play with the guys that they play with for club and country and it helps you know uh, i see daniel doing extra one day and i'm like okay i gotta do extra because mm -hmm. i know why he's doing extra or i see also doing extra mark doing extra and vice versa it's like we feed into each other in a good positive way where it's like uh, we see one guy pushing giving his all today we're like okay i know exactly why he's doing that not only is it for tfc of course it's for tfc but there's obviously the the big show in November and everyone wants to be ready for that. So it keeps all of us accountable, which is very good. And then, you know, having to have real conversation with the guys that I've played with in the national team for now nearly four years is also a positive. Just when you thought you were going to take an early sauna, they just have to go out there and kick a ball around. So now you got to join them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to get your thoughts too on, you know, John Herman being this great motivator. And just as World Cup qualifiers are starting, he plops into your hand this mock newspaper front cover of you guys qualifying for the World Cup. Just your reaction when you first looked at it and went, oh, right? Like you still have a long road ahead of you, but there it is right in front of you. What could be? Honestly, at that point from that's one of many things he's done that you guys don't know about. So when he put that in our hands, I honestly, I didn't even flinch at that point because I'm like, you know what, I'm going to. I believe this guy if he's saying it it's gonna happen because he's said so many things in the past done so many things where maybe early on i've looked at him and I've thought all right you're crazy like mm -hmm. really and then now it's it all went to plan and it happened like that so it's obviously when we saw that it was you're looking at it and you're like okay we need to make this happen just as, as we look at the journey as a whole is there um, a moment a game maybe there was a conversation that stood out to you as you were on this historic journey? Um, probably just the first game against um, Honduras at BMO Field. I know the turnout at first was a lot of Honduras fans, mm -hmm. but just the moment of knowing, like standing there singing the national anthem that we we're playing in a World Cup qualifier, especially for a lot of us being Toronto born players, our families, wives, girlfriends, parents, brothers, sisters, all in the stands is, you know, a pretty pretty cool moments. So I think that was the first eye-opening one for me because it was like, you know, I'm getting to play a World Cup qualifier game that not many people get to play in my hometown, representing my country with like my loved ones and the fans, and then also competing with um, my brothers to, to win a game. So it was a really cool moment.